Bronix Reviews. We've got a bit of a crazy one today. Yeah, it's kind of a mailbag question that we're doing. We're also going to kind of do another review of Star Wars The Force Awakens. Now, you've seen my review, but I've actually got my sister on here on Skype. So, uh, say hello. This is Catherine, by the way. Say hello. Hello. There we go. Right, okay. Is uh, it just me? Oh, well, James, yeah. Any any words of uh, to contribute, James? <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, okay. So it's James and Catherine, right? Um, so my sister Catherine and James, they just saw Star Wars The First Awakens yesterday, so we're going to kind of talk about that, their thoughts about that. And presumably you've got some questions. This is the first time we've spoken about this film since you've seen the film. Um, but before we get into that, there's a mailbag question. It comes from Paul Cage, and he messes up every time he sends a question. It's usually a typo. This one, this, It's not particularly typos in this, but I'll explain it as I'm going through anyway. So this is the question, right? Uh, I'm going off memory here, but something about Star Wars Stormtroopers confuses me. I will start with the prequels. The Stormtroopers are all clones of Jango Fett. <laughs> they talk South African. <laughs> they don't. It's, it's a New Zealand guy. He's not South African. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> that's a classic. Uh, then in the original trilogy, they talk American, and even though we don't see their faces, are they meant to be the same as in the prequels? If so, why are they American? Then in Force Awakens, they are all complete individuals and just hired help. So where does the Clone Wars fall into this, and how do all the Stormtroopers fit into the mythology? So what do you, what do you guys think about that? Stormtroopers are taken at birth, aren't they, from families? And yeah, pretty much. That is all you do know, isn't it? Because it's different, for whatever of a better word, baddies in this one. So it, where's the continuation from one set of baddies to another? They just keep using stormtroopers, presumably because they've mass-produced all the equipment and stuff to make them look like that. Yeah. But, like, there isn't a lot of continuation between the last one and this one. Who makes the uniforms? Well, yeah. Because <laughs> I want one. That's a business that's doing well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is actually a thing that came out. It was um, some f- um, First Order, which is the, I'm kind of showing the camera, what First Order, f- sorry, First Order Stormtroopers are. Um, that's these guys. Got this. First Order. Mug from HMV. What he? Um, but yeah, there was a toy that came out, and he actually basically explained the whole thing. So, I mean, as good as an answer as I can give, I might as well just read this out. And it was kind of a blurb that came with, like, a toy of the First Order figures. I'll just read this thing out. It's not too long. Uh, Shock troopers clad in white armour first appeared on the galactic stage during the opening battles of the Clone Wars. So we saw it in Episode 2, didn't we? Um, clone trooper armour became iconic almost immediately. Its stark white design stood for hope that peace and stability might be restored to a galaxy at war. But this dream of peace died with the Republic. So that'd be end of episode three, basically. And the Empire that rose to take its place imposed order by any means necessary. So now we're talking about the original trilogy. Soldiers within the Grand Army of the Republic were given a new name, Stormtroopers. As these former protectors of galactic peace mercilessly crushed resistance across the galaxy, their white armour came to symbolise oppression and the indomitable power of the Emperor's will. Yet the tyranny of the Imperial rule sparked rebellion and the Stormtrooper legions were scattered in the aftermath of the Empire's fall. Now the rise of the First Order ushers in the next chapter of the Stormtrooper's legacy as a new era of ruthless brutality begins. That's it. That's pretty much as good an answer as you can get, really, isn't it? Yeah, I, th- I guess so. I think the, the 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 problem with the new film is who the heck is the First Order, and what the hell is with that CGI buddy? Because he's not. It it was ju- it was just well. It wasn't very good, was it? Really? No. It the way was, that it was explained. Was really poor. From a, from a standalone film point of view, yeah, I agree. I mean, in a few years' time, we won't really care as much because we will know the answer to that. But for now, when you're going to see this film on its own, if you judge it by its own merits, I agree with you. I fully agree with you on that. Yeah. I, I do have my own theory, if you want to hear this. Again, I'm not getting this from anywhere, but... It's 20 hours. Eh? Well, that's, <laughs> that's, your, that's your sky. Ignore that. That was not... <laughs> um, but yeah, no... 
Do you remember episode three? Have you seen episode three quite like recently or enough times to remember it? Yeah, probably. Well, you'll, you might remember this scene. It's actually one of the few scenes in any of the prequels that I thought was really good. And it's where... Oh, uh, no, um, Anakin Skywalker sat at some kind of like weird opera thing with... Um, um, what's his name? Palpatine. And, oh, yeah. he, and he's telling him about the dark side and how... He tells him about this legend of Darth Plagueis. And Darth Plagueis was one, the one that trained Palpatine... And he says that he could create life using the midichlorians, which kind of hints that that's where Anakin came from, that this Darth Plagueis created Anakin, or maybe Palpatine learned how to do it and created Anakin. Um, And then also he said that he... Well, he he said that his student, being himself, uh, Palpatine killed Darth Plagueis. But he did say that Darth Plagueis could basically cheat death, so... Darth Plagueis could effectively come back and some people have said that's probably who this Supreme Leader Snoke is, that CGI character and it's backed up by the fact that although it doesn't count in the expanded universe they've depicted Darth Plagueis visually and he looks a hell of a lot like Supreme Leader Snoke so I'm thinking that's who that's going to turn out to be but um it just didn't seem very creepy. It just seemed a bit sort of Harry Potterish or something. Yeah. Or Lord of the Rings kind of not very scaryish. I, I'm not. It just didn't seem very. I, I wonder if that was done on purpose so that he was meant to be almost in the background, and that they almost played it down so that later on in the many other films that will appear, yeah, he will have more of a kind of. I don't know, a role or a presence or whatever. I don't think he was meant to be that scary. I think he was just meant to be there in the background. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Because, yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Because if he looked really scary, your focus would be on him. Yeah. And I, for me, this film is really just sort of laying the foundations for... Well, all none of the characters were particularly anything, were they? I mean, no. it's even kind of like Kylo Ren's a bit... What? Yeah. It's kind of like around. slightly unattractive and a bit of a, I don't know, it, it, it was a bit kind of, you, you kind of expect a bit more, but I suppose if it is just sort of laying out the Yeah, story, you, yeah you're, then, meant to, you're meant to go away and discuss it, aren't you, and come up with all these theories and that will keep you going for the next two years until the other film comes out and then you'll do the same again, won't you? But I think in this film it was, like that review said, it's a bit of a sort of trailer, isn't it, really, for what's to come. That's yeah. what it does feel like. It feels like it's just setting out the stall for a lot of the characters, so they're not sort of they're not committing too much with anything really, which is fair enough, I suppose. It's just a little bit. Yeah, it was a good Star Wars film, but I'm not sure it was a, a particularly good film. Whereas I would have said the original sort of 1977 Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, certainly Star Wars, um, they were good films. They were films that at the time, um, kind of pushed the boundary of special effects and they had a real sort of narrative to them, whereas this film was kind of, it's like I said to you when we come out of the cinema, it's like one of those bands who sort of do a best hits album and they put like two new songs at the end and that's what it felt a bit like, it felt like the very first Star Wars film that came out in the cinema was in the 70s, but I don't know, it didn't. What was the first thing you said? When, when I turned around and looked at you. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> After that... I can't remember. I remember the first thing I said. The first thing I said is, I feel like I've seen that before. Yeah. It, Cause it was everyone so said that, yeah. Ridiculously like episode four. I, in every way, kind of... In a good way, like, all the sand dune sequences were yeah. really... It really felt like whoever's done this has do, has done their homework, and not only done their homework, but they've got a real affection for it as well. You can tell a lot of the sound effects of different droids and characters, the feel of that sort of the the bit that's meant to be like the cantina. It all all felt very very good. You couldn't criticise that. That's one thing about the prequels. Awfully familiar. The whole story, as much as it was a story felt very, very, very familiar to the point of, oh, I wonder what's going to happen next. Oh, of course, because we've seen it before. Yeah, the, the narrative was, 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 
you don't. I, mean, I wasn't expecting some kind of great storytelling. Although I would argue that that was a strong point of the original films that they did tell a story, albeit one that was kind of tried and tested. But the whole idea that, as I said to you, that they suddenly find Luke Skywalker in one hyper jump after finding yeah. this map, after finding this mysterious weak pot, weak spot, weak pot, weak spot in this mysterious big weapon, and it was all a little bit too predictable and. You know, that's I suppose people who like Star Wars and go and watch those films don't really care about that. But I think if you want to connect an audience to the film or the characters, then you know it was all a little bit unbelievable. You know, there was you know I know it's a science fiction film or whatever, but it was all like oh, you found Luke Skywalker really, really quickly in the end after he's disappeared for years. And also, I wasn't particularly happy that no one seemed to give a shit that Han Solo died. They kind of glossed over yeah. that element of it. I'm not expecting like a huge funeral or anything because, you know, a, a Princess Leia has gone through a lot in her life and she's that kind of woman who would just pick herself up and get on with it and there's things to do and that's more important. But it all just felt a little bit, I don't know, and I I read a review and I was like, oh my God, because they, they, they mentioned joking like, in, pre- in one of the um, previous films where they said about the many bottoms had died to, to get this information, there was none of that kind of element of, no. and here is the struggle, There's this no is how it's gone it. on. It was just sort of like, bad things are happening, let's go and kill these people. It was all kind of, it, it, it rushed all through that element of it, I thought. Can I, can I talk about how old Harrison Ford looked <laughs> on the Millennium Falcon? <laughs> Yeah. I've never seen a man look so old and laboured. <laughs> oh, bless him, though. And, and he didn't phone it in, though, did he? He gave a good performance. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't have a Stan Astaire on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> He's not 60, by the way. <laughs> but Harrison Ford just looks... She hasn't really acted in a long I, time. I have to stop at one point and kind of changes his incontinence pants or something. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't think he's going to be watching this. It's all right. <laughs> but that, that's why I quite like, uh, even before he died, you could see the two young people are so desperately needed because literally the only people that are left that are doing this stuff yeah. are, are on their last legs. I mean, I know Chewbacca will go on forever. And yeah. he's, got his, he's, he's got his bitch, that, uh, that um, tangerine um, Yoda crossed with... Um, E.T. woman, what, what's her name? I liked her. Oh, yeah. She was, and she she was, was a CGI cool. character, wasn't she? A new droid, which I don't know the name of. BB-8. Something postcode in BB-8. Blackburn or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I loved the... BB-8. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, yeah. I, I did. The actors were actually much better actors and did a better performance than the likes of the so-called originals. Yeah, know, I agree with that. Yeah. I, I definitely thought they brought something to it. I just, and I realise it's one of many films, but it just, oh, I don't know, I just thought... I thought the narrative at the end, halfway through it, I was just kind of like, this, this has got a bit silly, really. Yeah. I, did, I didn't I did think I was going to like Ray. I looked, I don't know, I I, I just thought she's going to be like Keira Knightley. Keira Knightley, yeah. I really can't handle her. She's too sort of fierce. But I actually started to really like her by the end of it. But yeah. In the early bits, I was just sort of like, oh, no, please, this is going to be some sort of like... I don't know, girl power kind yeah. of. Yeah. You know, I'm really not. Yeah. I want to see oh. someone do the match where they play this film with the original Star Wars, like in a sort of side by side thing on YouTube, and they start picking out where it's exactly the same. I yeah, Red Light Media will because probably do that. It was uncannily. It wasn't. It was all made out to be kind of you know an affectionate kind of homage to the original, but it was it was almost too much like the original films. It was like there was yeah, no invention yeah. or anything about it. When they were trying to find the weak spot and they're going down that side, oh, obviously, yeah, and of course they're going to hit it and it's going to all line up and they're going to fire a shot and it's going to go through and everyone's going to go, whoop, and it, and it happened. Yeah. Well, it, it, was, it, was all, it, it wasn't very engaging in that aspect. You knew that when they were walking around that um, huge planet version of the Death Star. Yeah. Uh, they were going to find each other really quickly. They didn't seem to have that much of a struggle when they were putting, planting all the bombs and everything. And you knew it was going to happen because, well, you just knew it was going to happen. And I hadn't read any spoilers or anything, so I had no idea. Yeah, I, I, apart from the really obvious point, is there any any doubt at all whose parents Kylo Ren's parents are? Yeah, I mean, I kind of guess. I don't understand how that's even. I, I was led to believe there was loads of twists and turns and I don't normally get stuff in films and I, I predicted most of that film from the off. Yeah. But I was led to believe it was, you'll be really surprised, you'll be on the edge of your seat. 
That wasn't yeah, really no. at all. No. As soon as as soon as he walked towards Carlo Ren, you're like, right, he's gonna die, isn't he? Yeah. Basically, I think he had to go. Off, I think he had to go off and do another Indiana Jones film or something. I think that's why he died. <laughs> yeah. He was like, thank God. Well, the thing Indiana is, Jones and the Kingdom of the Care Home or whatever it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> You, well, actually, you remember you took the piss out of me last week for, on Facebook for saying best performance out of Chewbacca, but do you know what I mean now? The bit where Han Solo got killed. No, that, that... I actually had tears in my eyes for Chewbacca and yeah. also BB-8 as well, because yeah. I thought he... The thing that I liked about BB-8 was the thing that annoyed me with R2-D2 is he was just too much of his own kind of guy. Like he, Because he was on his own little mission, he'd like bugger off somewhere and... and and, and like he'd go off with Luke Skywalker. He also, because of his like mobility, <laughs> not to not to disrespect him for that, but he didn't seem to be in it that much. They were kind of always waiting for him to catch up and get into spaceship quick. Whereas BB-8 is just there. Yeah. And he's kind of a lot more human, a lot more humorous. Yeah. He's like a sort of young, fresh version of R2D2, but he's. I don't know, I don't normally like, I would have thought, oh God, that's the character I'm really not going to like, because it's going to be one for the children, but I thought actually that was really good. Well, like a kind of a comedic timing that they kind of nailed, I thought, with yeah. BB-8. I also thought it was interesting that actually none of the original Star Wars, Millennium Falcon, X-Wing fighters, even R2-D2, none of that actually looked that dated. No. And that's interesting, and that shows you how much the original film push things forward but they could take those spaceships they could take that kind of droid and they could act, actually it still looked like relevant now but know? also like you said that film did look like it could have been released in the mid 80s yeah it, it, the good thing about the force awakens was it, in theory it could have been released about 1985 just after return of the jedi it looked like a sort of progression yeah but it it's had just the story that let it down it had none of the invention yeah of the films and people watching that won't really care. They're Star Wars fans. Um, that will be enough for them. But it's a real shame because I think you, you forget those original films were, were groundbreaking for the time. Yeah. And if filmmaking comes down to just copying what went before, I think you've lost something then. Yeah, they, they can get away with it. It's like a massive trailer for yeah. whatever comes next. Then that's great. But whatever comes next now really does have to be good. Yeah. I'd agree. It's, it's kind of like the Dark Knight. Not doing voiceovers for The Simpsons. I was not doing any voice. No, we well, have better performance I've seen from you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think they, they, it's kind of like um, like the Batman trilogy. It was like Batman Begins was like really good, but it was kind of setting up for what was to come after, which was like the Dark Knight, which was pretty much hailed as like one of the best superhero films like ever. Um, and you wouldn't really have had that if you'd have started on that. You had to kind of establish yeah. things first and then kind of move on. Yeah. I oh, think that is the plan. So we'll see how it goes. We're running out of time and we've got a couple of minutes left. But um, you know, what else was I going to say? There was no point I was going to make about it. But um... We've said it all, really. We don't need to. <laughs> well, yeah. We've done everything you ever need to do with your reviews. We, we, we've owned it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> we've just talked earlier. Yeah. I'm going to say, yeah. We've it. No, that's fine. It's pretty much your your review. So we we I think we answered the the stormtrooper question anyway. They aren't South African. They don't speak South African. He doesn't speak South African. Either. That's like our language. It's it's the accent. I know we know what you mean, Paul. But it's the guy was from New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> I just read it and I thought, bloody hell, Paul. Uh, first, well, yeah. I can't remember the name of the actor. It was somebody, Mor- Tuema Morrison, I think the name of the actor is. But they were the, the clone troopers were obviously just clones of him. And Boba Fett was a clone of him. So he kind of redid things for special editions. But the stormtroopers in the original trilogy were just kind of people that presumably volunteered or drafted into it. And I think in the, the new one with the First Order, I think they're even more uh, like from birth, like brainwashed and conditioned... So it's not just people who have volunteered because they believe in the cause. I think these are real people, not clones, but they've effectively been taken from birth and just kind of indoctrinated. So was there anything else you wondered about what we thought of it? or? Um, no, I think you pretty much kind of covered a lot of things without even having to kind of ask you. I mean, um, the next few films, I've done a whole another video on it about the next few films, but luckily we don't have to wait that long for, for the sequels because... In a year's time, we get a prequel, but then th- five months after that, it's been a year and five months' time, we get episode eight, 
So it's not like it was before. We had to wait three years. So who is going to be the who's the key character to watch? And now you've messed with my mind because I was just sort of thinking. I know there's been loads of different debates on the internet because I have looked since the film. But who is Ray? I, when I was watching it, I thought it was pretty clear that she was probably Luke Skywalker's daughter because yeah. surely Princess Leia would have recognised her if it had been her daughter. But if she's just been made out of midichlorians, what the hell? She could be somebody like, I don't know, a relative of like Obi-Wan's or something. God knows how they're going to do it. And that would really annoy me if it was because that's a bit of a stretch, I think. Yeah, and they kind of shrink in the universe as well if they do that. It's a bit obvious, isn't it? Well, it's a bit yeah, obvious that that, uh, that the character with the lightsaber, who we quite liked, can't think of the name, wouldn't reveal how she got the lightsaber, and she also said to her, your family definitely aren't coming back, so there, there's something in there, isn't there? Yeah. She did something, and that's going to probably be explained, how she got Luke's lightsaber, and how she knows about her family, which is what she intimated. Yeah, because I think if she was Luke's daughter, they would have pretty much said so. And if not, why not? I think so, because it's kind of hinted that that's what she is, but if that's what she is, then where's the big reveal? I think they're probably going to save a big reveal, and it's not going to be what we expect. But oh. watch this video again in, in a while. Hmm. In, you know, when the next film comes out, and we'll see. Trust me, it'll, it'll be here in no time. There's videos of like me and Cor talking like two years ago about these films, and it seemed like a million years away. <laughs> so... A million light years away. No, it was a long time ago. That's in a, in a... far far away. Exactly. <laughs> the force to yeah. And on that note, I think we better leave it there anyway. So, yeah, if you ever want to come back and do any more videos, uh, feel free, because it's quite a good one, to be honest. So, uh, oh, okay. nice Thank you one. Very much. Right, I'll let you guys get off. That's This is Brandix Reviews, so if you want to follow us, feel free to do so on social media. I'm just waiting for James now to say a rude word. <laughs> Go on, say it. I can even edit it out. I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> nah. right yeah um, so some information coming up I can follow us on social media but for now I'll say thank you very much for watching and thanks Paul for the question uh, and amusing us with the you South Africa is it <laughs> alright right, bye <laughs>Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Just so you know, for more news, reviews and retrospectives, you can like our page on Facebook, simply called Brand X Reviews. But as well as that, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube via this video. You can also bookmark our website, which is brandxreviews.com, which is pretty much a central hub for everything that I've just mentioned. So check that out and we will see you next time. Thank you very much.